folks, on this episode of Hit the Mahogany, uh, we've had a mojito before, headed to Cuba, uh, we're going to head back down there uh, and uh, we're going to do a daiquiri. Not normal daiquiri though, we are going to do one that was uh, invented for a very famous writer and if you haven't got there already, we're going to be doing a Hemingway daiquiri. Alright, so a little bit of a background to this one. Allegedly Hemingway liked his daiquiris, but uh, he, he didn't like uh, them too sweet. And uh, at the bar in Havana, El Floridita, I always struggle pronouncing that one, the bartender there, Constantino, uh, I think that's right, uh, came up with uh, a drier version of a daiquiri. And of course, you know, Lots of us have enjoyed daiquiris, but uh, you know, many times they tend to be a little bit on the sweet side. And uh, allegedly, Hemingway drank uh, one afternoon seventeen of his uh, his uh, what was called a, a Hemingway special, but then the Hemingway daiquiri. He drank seventeen of them. Uh, and I, I just reading about that, somebody was joking that uh, you know if he didn't die of the alcohol, he was going to die of the sugar. Something anyway. Must have been a good day anyway. All right. So, this one, not sweet. If you like daiquiris, but you want something different, this is the one to go for. All right, white rum. Got some El Dorado here. Uh, I'm actually going to be making two of these, as I normally do, because there's somebody else that may want to enjoy these. And as I said before, if they don't like it, I'll just drink two of them. So this is actually two fluid ounces of white rum. You can use any white rum that you got there, you know, whether it's Bacardi or something else, anything is going to work for this for you. As I say, whatever you like, you use definitely, okay? So that's two ounces per uh, cocktail there, okay? Now the big one in this one is, now this recipe itself doesn't have any sugar in it. Some people I've seen somewhere there is a little bit of simple syrup in it, but because we're actually using a liqueur, there is a little bit of sweetness goes in there. Grapefruit juice. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you want this one if you're taking any statins or anything like this, but uh, you know what, yeah, up to you what you actually do there. Grapefruit juice, already measured out, one and a half ounces per cocktail, so this is actually three ounces that I've got here, since I'm doing two. There we go. All right, lime juice, half an ounce of lime juice, we've got that here, so that is going to be one ounce in total for this one. You know, hopefully at some point I'll actually be able to get down to Havana in Cuba. I saw a picture, it might pop up there, uh, of the, the bar El Floridita, uh, where uh, they have a, a life-size bronze, life bronze statue of Hemingway standing at the end of the bar. And uh, apparently they actually put a daiquiri in front of them every single day. I think that's a, I think that's a great touch, it really is. And, you know, clearly the, the people down there appreciated them, certainly. Uh, it appears to certainly given them pretty damn good business, that's for sure, alright? A maraschino liqueur, okay? This is core to this as well. So that's going to be half an ounce per cocktail, so that's one ounce that we're actually putting in there. And there's a little bit of sweetness. And let me actually, let's, let's taste this one, let's see what this tastes like just by itself. You know, it's not often that you actually taste these things uh, without, before you put them in a cocktail. Things like chartreuse or anything at all, you know. Hmm. Sweet, <laughs> strong, floral back to it, uh, flowery, and then a dryness at the end. You know what? It's good. There's a lot of depth to it. And even with that, with that dryness at the end, I say there's a little bit. There's almost a little bit of a an earthiness creeps in there as well. Anything like this, whether it's uh, falernum or anything of that type, it just adds an extra depth to the cocktail, and it works really, really well in this one. Really does. Uh, ice. Let's get this puppy chilled down, then, okay? There we go. Legs from there just for good luck. That's our ice shaker. All right, let's get this one shaken up, then, okay? Ah, 
and done. Whoop, cold again. All right, let's get this one strained out. I've had this one before, I really like this one actually. It's funny, there's a few of these that you forget, like, uh, you know, I, I think of the, the Scofflaw, which is a really excellent cocktail, and I keep forgetting about that one, it's really, really good, you know. Uh, and this is one of these ones as well. Now, of course, it is a pretty big drink. You've got two ounces of spirit in there. Uh, apparently, he liked doubles of these. I was trying to remember, was it 17 double versions of this? Holy mackerel. You know, I've drunk a few in my time, but uh, you must have sweated a lot of that out. Okay, perfect. Seen somewhere, uh, mate, you know, you could get a, a Luxardo cherry, uh, Luxardo maraschino cherry. You can put that across the top. Uh, but for this, we are actually just going to use a lime wedge. You know, it is a daiquiri. There's lime juice in it. Why not? Now, because there's grapefruit in it, if you happen to... You get some of the peel of the grapefruit, you could just zest it, use that in it as well. I think that would be a great great touch, you know, just you know, put a bit of the, the, the grapefruit around the edge of it. Delicious either way. Alright. Oh my goodness. I do. Honestly, I really like just this, the anticipation. Are you going to get to tasting it? Are you going to taste it? Your mind, the anticipation of actually, and then when you get to actually doing it, the enjoyment that hits you. Oh. Grapefruit juice is dry. So, you know, grapefruit juice is dry. Rum comes through nicely in that. But it's not, it's not overpowering. It's just in the background there. You can see why you can drink this really easily. Grapefruit, you've got a bit of the lime juice coming through. The maraschino liqueur. You know there's sweetness, you've got a little bit of bitterness from that grapefruit and then the dryness coming through and a little bit of that floral component of the, the maraschino liqueur and then just at the end, it's a bit of a difficult one to taste. It's an umami, who, who blazes knows? There's just something at the end there. I'm trying to put my finger on it. You know what, I'll need to have another sip just to check that one. It's all up front first, the burst. The citrus, refreshing. Then the dryness comes in. There's no sweetness in this. If you want to, you can add a little bit of simple syrup if you do like that. But you're totally getting away from the cloyingness of, you know, if you go into a bar and you ask for a da daiquiri, it's probably just like, just loaded up with syrup of one type of another. And it's really too sweet. And you will wake up with a bitching hangover the next day. This, you'll probably still wake up with one because you're going to enjoy it so much and drink so many of them. But, uh, yeah, it's just a, there's a, a subtle bitterness at the end, which actually, which is very really interesting, because you got that at the end, it's almost as though it makes you want to taste more of it. Uh, either way, great drink, refreshing, great idea by a, a, a El, Florid, El Floridita bar. That's a struggle for me, that one there. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, might have been cool to hang out with Hemingway down there at that point in time. If we're lucky, it'd be easier for us at some point in our lives to uh, be easy. You know, you can get down there, but uh, uh, hopefully it'll make it easier. Anyway, here is to the Hemingway daiquiri. Oh. Cheers. Enjoy yours.